All right, it's four o'clock. <laughs> so somebody take charge. <laughs> uh, Ellen is not joining us. Stoddard is not joining us. Um, okay. And do um, you want to go to the second the election of subcommittee yes. first? Yeah, I was no, going to say no public funding. My suggestion there is either we delay it until Ellen is here, okay. or we elect Ellen since she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> no. What was the suggestion? To either delay it until Ellen is here, or elect Ellen because she's not here and she hasn't I, been. I, I don't think we should elect her just because she's not here. That's not right. I was making a joke. She was kidding. So what? Oh. Would, so I think there's a consensus maybe to wait until the next meeting to elect a chair or I'm fine with that okay okay um so let's go back to public comments and you can run it because you're I mean either one of you can run it well do we have any public comments do we have any public comments yeah. okay no public comments and so then we have the go back up to the current policy oh, you have I'm sorry what? Uh, Professor Olkin has his hand up. Oh, okay. Art, would you like to make a comment? You're muted, Art. <clears throat> you're, you're muted, Art. Is there any way we can unmute him or he has his? Can you go? I think you can go to the. He's not doing it. Huh? He's on his own Okay. Gotcha. You can mute him. But we can't unmute. Okay. Great. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh, Liz has her hand up now. Yeah. yeah, I didn't put in a slip for public comment, but thinking about it, I just wanted to express my concern about the last board meeting. It was probably, after all the years I've gone to board meetings, it was probably one of the most disturbing for me that we've had. So I just wanted to express that. And I'm glad you're having this subcommittee meeting about decorum because it it was it was hard to watch. And some other people have asked, is that the way board meetings always are? So yeah, I see that something needs to be done, but that's all the comment I wanted to make. Because I was just, I was just, I don't know. It disturbed me for quite a long time after I watched it. So thanks for hearing me. Thank you, Liz. Um, did, well, did Art move up? Uh, I think he's left. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Trustee Gullet Moore has her hand up. Okay. <clears throat> Trustee? Thank you. Yes. Um, um, I appreciate you making that comment about uh, our most recent board meeting. Um, I too uh, am, am very much so bothered by it. Uh, so um, I just find it kind of interesting that we have the policy, uh, I believe 2355 to be selected to discuss for this meeting and hopefully moving forward that we will implement more intentional processes to um, try to mitigate any more repeats similar to what you observed at the last meeting. I apologize for that um, because I think it's a, it's a lesson learned for all of us on how to not um, allow for that type of behavior to even to go on after it starts. Thank so you. I think we were all, I think we were all in shock actually, like, <laughs> is this really happening? And so um, hopefully we, we can learn, all of us will learn from it on how to kind of minimize that type of behavior. Thank you. Um, well, I certainly agree with those comments, both um, Liz and Trustee Gallup Moore. Uh, we have on our agenda a comment from a uh, member of the public here, which is titled Personal Attacks or Appropriate Discourse at SBCC Board Meetings. And then another title says Personal Attacks at SBCC Board Meetings. Um, and apparently, I remember him commenting, mm -hmm. and apparently it was probably October, maybe September. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, I think it was. And um, so he has specific suggestions here, uh, as well as general comments about the importance of respectful conduct. Um, I thought his comments were were good and they were important when when he made them, and I think they certainly resonate now. Um, would people like to suggest um, specific items that we add to this policy? There is a version that has been since EPAP. Uh, back in 2020, I guess, quite a while ago. Is that the one that has the line out? Has the line on out. On this one. Yeah. And it actually looked, I mean, I had no problem with those changes. I think they make sense, uh, but they don't address some of the issues we're now talking about. Right. I, that, that was my thought that one of the things we have to do is actually include um, speakers, audience members, or board members, mm -hmm. because yes. I think this policy as it's written right now wouldn't necessarily apply to okay. board members, but I think, um, in, and in the spirit of the suggestions that, um, that Mr. Hamill made, I think hopefully he would agree that it applies to everyone in the room. So we need to spell out that it is um, also board members. I see uh, Dr. Gullett Moore's hand up. Yeah, so you, I'm hearing that we're referring to a member of the public making a comment about decorum. Where are you reading this? Um, it's one of the attachments to the agenda. Uh, I'm not looking at the screen, so I don't know whether it's attachment two or three. But it's so I, I I saw the email with the four um, meeting materials as it relates to board policy twenty three fifty five, and then there's an example that was provided yeah, from CCO. Yeah, can you see this one? That we're pulling it out for you. Okay, do you see it? Yes. So um, I'm sorry, I just didn't see the person's name. That came from a particular person. It did. It came from a community member named Greg Hamill, and he had uh, reached out to Trustee Abood and me, um, utilizing the board policy that allows a community member to put an item on the board agenda. So any community member can put an item on. They have to do it two weeks in advance. And uh, Trustee Abood and I met with him and went over what he wanted to talk about because he wanted to basically do this. Um, he believed that our decorum policy needed to be updated. And his comments were specifically couched or re referenced to the July meeting and um, the public comment and comments in general that happened around center motion. So Trustee Abood and I walked through what he wanted to say and made suggestions. And then he presented this, I believe at the October board meeting, it was, it was agendized. And part of that conversation with him was letting him know that when the policy committee, once uh, November came, or I'm sorry, December came, and the board did its organizing meeting that the that the board committee membership would be identified and that at their first meeting, which is today, the board co uh, policy committee would review his suggestions related to BP um, 2355. So that's how we got here. Okay, cause I just I just heard you and trustee, uh, thank you for that, that, that information, you and trustee, uh, Croninger was talking about a member of the public, and I didn't see any of that information um, in the email, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Obviously, these were conversations. So my thing is, I'm all for um, making suggestions for the policy. I believe that we need to add some more things. I'm not in complete agreement to what has been already striked, striked out. 
I think that there's still some more stuff that needs to be added. I just heard you mention, uh, Dr. Andrew, that it doesn't include um, speakers and board members. And I'm thinking it really doesn't have to be that specific when you just identify what type of behavior or language will not be um, supported at a meeting. So whether okay. it's from the board member or speaker, it doesn't, it, it apply to everyone, right? So how, are you okay if we take down this document and put the revised doc, the revised policy back up so we can talk about? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Let's do that so that we're all looking at the same. Um, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. So the revised, so the one that has already the strikeouts, was, was that from the public member, Greg Hamill? No, that, um, do you want to talk about that? Sure. When I saw what we were discussing today, then I wanted to go back and check with the CCLC to see when the last legal update happened with this policy. And that was in 2020. Our document online was last updated in 2015, 2016. And so I went looking through BPAP, which I chaired that committee, and it looks like BPAP reviewed this policy back after, in April of 2020 after the uh, the legal update. So I figured I would share it with the group so you could at least take a look at something that the BPAP committee had went through. And I wasn't I wasn't part of it at that time, so I don't know what the discussion was, but it does include the legal updates, was, which was really just the removal of the bullets um, at the top part was really the only um, adjustment and then adding that uh, the term subdivision, the references section, that was the legal updates were very minimal. So I was just sharing this with you with the policy committee looked at, or the, excuse me, BPAP committee looked at. So is this the document that you think there are, that you have suggested changes for? Trustee Gallagher. I'm sorry. Is this the document that you have recommended changes for? Yes, because okay. um, thank you, thank you for that um, um, for that additional information, uh, uh, Demetrius. Because I was just curious, because this is we're, we're the policy committee, and I'm under the impression that this is under our purview to make revisions to our board policies. So I was just trying to figure out well, who went ahead and already started making oh <laughs> the the revisions. That's that's why I was like, well, who who did this already? Mm -hmm. um, but I find it. I'm I'm concerned about taking out the part where it says offensive language. Maybe it's too generic. I don't know. Um, and you mentioned, um, um, Denitra's that you went through legal advice on what language could be in here and could not. So legally, we can't have profanity, obscenity, and other offensive language. That can't be a part of this document? No, ma'am, that's not what I was saying. What I was sharing with you, my intention was to share with you, um, CCLC, uh, based upon changes to our ed code or other legal uh, document, will provide us with legal updates twice a year. And so in their last legal, uh, or the legal update in 2020, that was what they recommended. And really, I think it's just a subdivision that we needed to add. And then other than that, um, <clears throat> the rest is more of a suggestion rather than a, um, a requirement. Well, okay. we also have an attachment for what the um, CCLC recommended. And under that section, they have disrupting, disturbing, or otherwise impeding the orderly conduct of the meeting is is under that ruled out of order. And yeah. we don't have that. And I see the note from them for that. That was new language that they suggested. They say this mm -hmm. policy is suggested as good practice because government code section 54954.3 subdivision B allows for reasonable regulations to limit speakers. So mm -hmm. I think that gives you more generic of disrupting, disturbing, impeding um, rather than it just being limited to profanity and obscenity. So can we mm -hmm. add to our... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we got more, do you think adding that disrupting language would be okay? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. 
Now, uh -oh. President, can I ask one more question? Oh, go. So um, with us taking out some of the pieces that's in the old version and putting in some of the new pieces from these other examples, are we allowed to um, just review the draft version before the next policy meeting to make sure? What I don't want is, I don't want us to have to have three meetings just to approve <laughs> one revision. So are we allowed um, um, to kind of get the general senses of what direction we want the policy language to go? And if there's any word semantics, can we still have an email correspondence and then at the next meeting, we have a um, kind of a final draft version. Can we can we do that? It's actually a little more complicated than that. Um, if the policy committee recommends changes, I think it would go to the full board to get their concurrence, mm -hmm. and then it would go to BPAP, and then it would come back to the full board. Yeah, got it. And that's after we have drafted the revisions. Yes. Right. yes. Okay. And here at this institution, the review by constituent groups happens in BPAP. Yes. We don't then send it individually out to the individual representative groups. Well, we have representation of everyone on BPAP, but okay. BPAP will take it out for a read. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so it we'll, does go out it, for a yes, read. It'll okay. go out. Yes. Okay. Well, that. Okay. Okay. Will that line stop what happened in the last meeting? Like, would we give would that give us the authority to prevent well, that, or do we need to add another line? Greg, his suggestions are more specific, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, it, the the line out for profanity, obscenity, and other offensive language is probably, in my mind because you can get into an argument about what, what that is. What that means, how do you define yeah, it? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I know it when and, I it, and it's a, not a simple <laughs> argument. It's yeah. not a simple one. I mean, I, I think the other broader characters, characterizations or terms are easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they don't get to what Greg is talking about, which is um, personal attacks on board members, other public speakers, mm -hmm. employees, um, that kind of behavior uh, is not listed here. I feel like personal attacks isn't really that like, like arbitrary. Like, I feel like people would be able to be like, if you mm -hmm. call someone out and say, you did this in a public meeting, which is personal and not about the agenda, I feel like that doesn't leave a lot for interpretation um do we use that language just from his well he's documents? got a one two three language also from the citizens advocacy center mm -hmm. and he's looked at that as well mm -hmm. can you show the one two three i don't see a one two three um bottom of the page that's personal attacks can we go to that page <laughs> That was the like little slideshow. Yeah, yeah, right there. Right there. At the bottom there is the one, two, three. Do you see that? Oh that. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So was a student trustee Colfin suggesting that we add this? Was that what you were suggesting? Uh yeah. I mean, I wasn't saying that specifically, but now that I'm reading these, they seem to cover everything. I don't know. Um how they could be interpreted on another committee though, like BPAP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I would add um it's not just board members. It's it's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah. It's, it's everyone. It's not just for board members, but anyone who's speaking at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're talking about employees, members of the public. Right. Um everyone. Could we combine the three into one sentence and be like, speakers will not be permitted to make condescending remarks, harass, uh, and personally attack and name call any board member, member of the public, or, or yeah, any board member, or member of the public. Would that be possible to like combine the three? 
Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. If we can make it one clean sentence. Um, I know that people can say, well, what is your definition of, of you know, harassment or personal attack or an abusive statement? And you get into, well, what does that mean? Uh, my thing is, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't see anyone's hand. I'm, I'm, I apologize. Um, if, if when you're at these meetings and someone is making an, an, a statement and it's clearly being targeted towards a particular individual, it's up to the chair and for us to to identify that so we can have a point of order and, and continue the move the, the meeting going forward. I think we just need to be more intentional on recognizing um, when this is happening. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that makes sense. The you know the the board president should make the decision, make the mm -hmm. call, but people can say point of order. Right. Yeah. Um, there's another situation that we've had in the past, which was an a member of the public speaking to the board and a member of the audience over speaking that person mm. so that you could not hear what the person who was at the podium was trying to say. Right. Um, I don't think this catches it unless you put it under harassing. Mm -hmm. Well, Trustee Croninger, in the other, in the example from CCLC, I think they had something about you have an ability to remove an individual when, yeah. you, when you're at a situation. So maybe we should definitely add that language. I think it would be, I think it would be in the first two paragraphs in the event that any meeting is willfully interrupted by the actions of one or more persons, so as to render orderly conduct. I think somebody over speaking in the audience, a speaker at the podium or a speaker at the dais is that. And so I think they could be removed. Okay. Well, I don't have a problem with that either. It didn't happen um, in that instance and it was Unfortunate. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, I think we've entered uncharted territory, and I think it's, um, <clears throat> especially when there's been a history, a long history of board meetings where people comported themselves in an appropriate manner, that especially if we're seeing any sort of escalation of behavior, it, it does it's jarring at first and, and it is hard to figure out what to do, but I think, yeah. you know, of late it's, I think it's going to be a little more, I think it's going to be a little easier to understand what actions need to be taken in order to keep the move, the meeting running in an appropriate manner. Yeah. Um, Liz, you have a comment. Yeah. Would this cover when a board member constantly interrupts and won't wait their turn to talk? It could. Would that, would that be disrespectful behavior or does that need to be called out? Because that seems to happen right. a lot. Yeah. I think it's disruptive it, it, behavior. It could, but, yeah. Depending on, you know, how, how it's happening. Yeah, I thought it happened at the last meeting. <laughs> well, I would, I, would, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the part in the CCOC. I think it says something about that the board president will provide like a verbal warning, mm -hmm. which know, he did, which happened. happened. Right. So when you yeah. pro you're provided a verbal warning, and then if it continues, then you are asked to be removed. And so um, I'm That's all for asking to move. That's the tricky part. It is because that person wouldn't have been removed. So how do you? How do, how do you enforce that? I don't know. Anyone with that yeah. kind of experience? You can remove anybody, probably. Well, and, and the policy, yeah. If the behavior continues, the person may be removed by a vote of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what I think is difficult about this is it's, it's a procedural set of steps in that in, in that um you know when you you go through the warning and the request that you don't and then you um call for a vote by the board and then the board votes all of that is usually more measured mm -hmm. and when you're in one of those situations it's difficult for the president of the board to kind of <clears throat> slow things down and 
have that happen. I've, I've, I've just seen that mm -hmm. previously, and I'm not even referring to to um, our recent meeting. Um, and mm -hmm. so I don't know if there's an easier way to do it, but that is <laughs> that is a difficulty with this remedy. Well, Jonathan almost got it right. He was going to either terminate the meeting or take a recess. Mm -hmm. I, I, if if no one has their hand up, I yeah. Just, mm -hmm. Um, Trustee Croninger, I hear what you're saying. That given the heat of the moment, that could be challenging. However, um, I firmly believe that we need to uh, identify that we will recognize this type of procedure um, in the language of this revised policy. And I believe with the current board members that we have today, we will be able to implement this. We will be able to do a hard stop, identify a warning has been provided. Now we need to um, make a motion on voting on the removal. My next question is, Who's doing the remove the physical removal? Like, how do you do? Does do does the security yeah. guard come in with that person, or do yeah. they? We at the request of Trustee Gallardo a couple of weeks ago, there actually was a security person in the room. He was at the top of the. He was there. We we are going. Oh, to, and it's okay. related to something else. Uh, another reason that she requested that. So every meeting going forward, there will be a representative, somebody from security. So in the event that we had to remove someone, if they won't go willingly, you know, we would take a short recess and um, the individual could be removed by security. So will we, so are we gonna now have one just on um, general purpose, have a security guard all the time or only yeah. when we think they're gonna be high, um, you know, no. contentious topics on the agenda? There will be, there will always be one there. Okay. Which, is, which in other districts is pretty standard practice to have at least one um, security person there. Uh, that's good to know. I didn't know we had one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we did. So are we going to add any of the language from the, this slideshow to our... Condensed to one sentence oh, one yeah. Three, yeah. and add that uh -huh. to um, the following will be ruled out of order. Is that where mm -hmm. we want it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we will include employees and members of the public, mm -hmm. not just board members here. Right. It's it's everyone. Yeah. It's anyone who would attend who could attend. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, more suggestions. Anybody? Um, at the end of the day, I'm still very concerned. And it's not so much to what happened at our last board meeting, but five years from now, seven years from now, I mean, I don't know how, when this policy, when this revised policy um, will be revised again. And can this, I want us to be careful on how we um, revise the policy because what I don't want is for us to create a document that can now be weaponized. And the person who is speaking because there are some injustices going on is now being labeled, you're being a, dis a disruptor and they're not being disruptive. So I want us to all keep that in mind as well. Well, not think, to be go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, therein lies the therein lies the difficulty with a policy like this, because decorum in some ways, not always, in some ways, is interpreted. And so you're right. We definitely need to make sure that we have a policy that can be administered or meted out in a way that doesn't, um, that 
that doesn't do exactly what you're referencing. Somebody who is articulating an unpopular viewpoint, they can, but from where I sit, it's not about uh, articulating the unpopular viewpoint. It's about how that individual goes of, about doing it. And mm -hmm. I, as much as the policy, and I think this is good, can articulate what does that look like? Um, raised voices, constant interruptions, um, name calling. And, you know, I thought you did an excellent job uh, at the meeting last week Thank saying, you. you know, you. the student decorum, like we wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> um, so I think that was, that was good and necessary because um, one can have a divergent view. It's how one expresses it. The way we do it is I hear you, but, and then that's just how we function. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's good. And I think that's a really good yeah. model mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, as, as, a, as I'm a black woman in, in, in America and um, yeah. a lot of times we are bringing up topics that no one wants to hear and mm -hmm. a lot of times are considered disruptive topics. Mm -hmm. And so I just want us to keep that in mind as we put forward this language, which I'm in favor of, of, of revising mm -hmm. and all the suggestions we've made thus far. But we, we also just keep in mind the same document we're creating. I can see it being weaponized. I, I completely hear you and I absolutely agree. And the absence of this type of document is equally problematic because then yeah. you don't have something to hang your hat on. And okay. I think it's not really the topic itself, but how people bring about the topic too. I think the document's yeah. more like reflecting that than like, oh, this is something that people might be uncomfortable talking about, but needs to talk about. It's kind of a different different. Yes. But to get to your original point, your original question, which is a great one, um, when it comes to board policies like this and all of the board policies that we have in administrative procedures, um, number one, CCLC comes out with a policy update every year. So they're constantly paying attention to how Title V is changing, and then they're updating the policies and sending along those policy updates. So BPAP and what Denitris and her folks do is keep those up to date. However, there's a second piece of it, and it's actually an accreditation expectation, and that is that the board will review all of its policies on a regular basis, and regular can be anything. It used to be a lot of colleges did it on a six-year cycle because that was how long the accreditation cycle was. Now, um, now the accreditation under the new standard, so we're still under the seven-year, but starting next year, all colleges visited will be under eight years. So I would imagine that right now we'll have a way we can schedule out how we, and, and you're smiling, so hopefully I'm okay. saying the right thing. No, 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 you are, you're perfect. I'm just thinking we've been on HR chapter seven for quite a while now. Okay. And so, yes, in theory, that works just yeah. like that, but, <laughs> but yes. So that's why I'm smiling. <laughs> now and the time we are next visited, I fully expect that we will have gone through all of the policies, yes. but we should have them on a rotation to make sure. Yes. We also need to, on a regular basis, do a double check to make sure that we have all the policies we're supposed to have, because sometimes um, we don't even know that we're missing one. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and accreditation teams, for a variety of reasons, some of them, depending on who the chair is, are really picky and like, do you have all these policies in place? And then others are yes. like, yeah, well, whatever, you know? So I'm more likely to say, do you have them? Um, okay. Yeah. that. That needs, I mean, it's not just BPAP that's reviewing yeah. them, then it needs to come back right, to the board. No, it, they're paying, it, so they're paying attention. Right. right. And and it has to go through a regular review, and that's the right. way that the board stays yeah. on top of what I mean, this one are. obviously got to BPAP. They had ideas, and it somehow never made it back to the board. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. Do we know what policies we need to add? I'm not aware that we're missing any right now. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, like I said, we are in chapter seven right now. We are 
almost done. We're working on our recruitment policy right now. Faculty are reviewing their AP mm -hmm. right now. Um, and that's the biggest focus for BPAP is on is on the mm -hmm. administrative procedures because mm -hmm. the BPs are for the board, right? Mm -hmm. And we just do the legal updates for those. So once we get done with that, then we'll cycle back to chapter one. Now I will say as legal updates come in through the year, then things will come in out of order. There's uh -huh. been a lot going on in student services. Mm -hmm. So we've had quite a few, um, I think the add and withdrawal, yeah. some language changed um, legally for that. So they those have come in. Uh -huh. So things can come in at any time based upon what our needs are. We don't have to sit on a bad policy uh -huh. just for the sake because it's not up for its you know return. Mm -hmm. I'll also say for this one, I've been, um, as I was kind of preparing for today, I was looking at other colleges at their 2355 to see if there was something maybe more robust, maybe more specific. Mm -hmm. And these, this is one of those ones that looks pretty streamlined across most of the community colleges and they don't veer too far off of what CCLC has recommended and what, um, the Dr. Jane, I can't remember what her last name. Mm. One of her recommendations is that what? Right. Yes, right. ma'am. Yes. Dr. Jane Wright mm -hmm. says that we want to be a little bit vague and not too specific yeah. because yeah. these yeah. are what we're going to hang our hat on. And if we say disruption is uh, offensive language, and I haven't used offensive language, but I have managed to derail the whole meeting then it's very hard to hold someone accountable for something that your policy actually seems like it could allow. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of general layer. I agree. Generalness is, is important in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got a question. Yeah. So do you have a, um, you're doing HR now, mm -hmm. but do you, have you all worked out a schedule of sorts that maybe there we could is a schedule. Share? I'm looking for it right now. Okay, so maybe we could share that at the next meeting, and just so that the policy committee knows what to expect coming down. Mm -hmm. the it's been a long time since I don't know if the policy committee has ever gotten BPAP updates, and it's been a long time since the board has seen changes in policies yeah. unless we specifically start talking about. So we something. need to do that definitely. Yeah. Okay. AP um, 2410 is your schedule. Yeah. But we um, we went through the, the reason this is a 2016, we went through the all of the board policies and we thought we were going to do it in a year. Three years to go long. through those policies. Yeah. And as I enjoy telling people, one of the policies to indicate how old they were said this newfangled thing called the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. We said that in the policy. Uh, trust I'm sure you. that's here. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Gullitmore. Yeah, so um, I'm just only because um, I just uh, want to kind of know we are on item number uh, 3.1 BP board policy 2355. And it looks like we have outlined some things that we want to add to the policy as mm -hmm. far as revising it. Yeah. Um, what, what, and and this is the seem to be the only policy that we're going to be discussing for this meeting. Yes. So my question is, what is the next step? Because I am all for helping with adding that language that we kind of identified in these other resources and start a, a Google Doc or something, get the draft going. Um, what, what are the next steps as far as getting the words? Yeah, no, the next step is for uh, Denitris to take this feedback back to BPAP. Yes. Make the make the changes and then it can go to the board for review. And then as assuming that you all are good, then you can take it no, up to no wait no. a minute. It goes to the board for review first, just first. to make sure they want to change the policy. That's right. And then I'm sorry. And it right. goes to BPAP. Yeah. So and, but we do need somebody to write the sentence and rearrange, you know, add the disrupting, disturbing. Denise and I can work on that. Okay. Yeah. We'll uh, that, that's that. all. I mean, it's like, yeah. It's, so we're all so, looking at the yeah. same document. And I think what you're saying is you'd like to see that document. Yes. So, so because so far, because I've been taking notes, I don't know 
if those of you who have never sat next to me, I, I love take no, taking notes. <laughs> so what I've gotten so far is we're going to add language about the removal, the, the same language that has been identified in that CCLC document. Right. We're going to add language that was also in that document um, when we talk about the abusive language, that that those bullets. Mm -hmm. We're also going to add the language about removal from the meeting. That came from Liz. She asked us about that. And then... Um, no, the removal, it's already there. It's there, but it needs to be clear that who's covered. Right. Right, right. And then um, I want to say there was, oh, and we're going to come, we're going to create those three bullets that our student trustee I didn't, um, asked about into one sentence. We're going to add Correct. that language. Yes. Okay. And then, so Denitris is going to do all of that. And then we're going to get an email with this rough draft. Is that what happens next? Yes. If you like it as a PDF or do you all do... You PDF all do fine. Yeah, PDF. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then that's fine. I will do that. Um, I was just making a copy and taking notes for myself as well. Um, you're going to see some of the edits that BPAP did last time, the document that Palmina shared with you, just because I don't uh -huh. think those have ever been approved. So since we do our track mm. changes and everything, mm -hmm. I don't want to just accept them all. Right. But I will go in and and, and add these yes, as track. And changes. I will share with you and Palmina okay. in case I missed anything. Okay. A quick question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will you will we be taking this to BPAP then? We we do have to take it to BPAP, but I think I think first what I heard is that the board needs to look at it first okay. to make sure that they want to take it to okay. You know, want these to proposed changes. Yes. So we'll get it on the March agenda for the board to take a look at. Yes. And then you can take it to BPAP. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, first, I mean, the idea being that yeah. if the board said, Ah, no, I don't want to do this. Um, yeah. Then we wouldn't bother you guys. Yeah. And, and BPAP is a little limited on what they can do for board policies anyway, since that's yeah. your project. Maybe. But uh, since the board doesn't write policy, we write it for them and yeah. they say yes. <laughs> yeah. Ideally. And ideally, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. That's, oh, uh, Trustee gullet -Moore? Yes. I, I'm sorry for all the questions. As you know, I've only been in this role for, what, 14 months? Um, so, is every board policy, it goes through this process. We have to, we come up with revisions and then it goes to the board and then it goes to BPAP and then it comes back to the board. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's part of the shared governance process of the college. Yep. And who's on this BPAP, um, like who's that? The BPAP is made up of representatives from all of our constituency groups. Ms. Liz Ockman-Kloss is part of BPAP. We have faculty members there from Academic Senate. Um, FA? No, we have oh. FA um, is a non-voting member and they're not quite a member, but they participate. Okay. But they're not voting members. Okay. So, uh, but CSCA is there, our ALA. ACE group, ALA is there as well. And then we have um, some deans there representing uh, their different chapters. There's a student member. It's me. And there's a student <laughs> member as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. No, it was, you may get bored. <laughs> I'm allowed to be on that and be Pam and students. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which will Thank be you. good. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. Thank you. Uh -huh. And they start asking questions uh -huh. and wanting to edit. Then you can help remind me <laughs> of what the reasoning behind the language is that we selected, because that's what no, generally good. comes next. I will be happy to. Yes. <laughs> so two administrator appointees, three classified, three faculty three managers and one student and one ace and one ace got an update mm -hmm. on the membership to listen and Liz and I were on the first BPAP ever <laughs> back when I was oh, the dean <laughs> Sue Ehrlich pulled the first BPAP together okay. full circle mm -hmm. it is a full circle moment and we're yeah, actually meeting this Friday yeah it's good seems to me that it might be appropriate when there is a draft um either well maybe the last draft i don't know one of them going to the board we should let um greg yeah the person who commented mm -hmm. know because he originally put it on the agenda yeah so we'll let, make sure he knows for yeah. the march yeah board meeting mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Okay. Is there a list of, 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 I sent an email asking, um, cause I know we had a policy committee that was meeting pretty regularly, I think in the past, is there a leftover list of policies that we were working on? And then it kind of, we, so for whatever reason, we stopped and, and should we go that, back and look at the, that list? I had a similar question. Um, <laughs> so I went and looked at when the last meeting was, and that was July 31st. I remember participating in that meeting with you and Trustee Stoddard. Um, and you all were working on the anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion policy. Mm -hmm. So those are still sitting there in the agenda. I am not, I, I do not know where the documents are that there might've been edits to what was originally posted and then what was changed based upon that meeting. I don't know where those documents might be. Um, Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, I can look for that. Uh, and, yeah, um, I... I was going to say, even I don't have my I don't have my binder with me. I'm 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 not at home, and so I don't have my policy binder to to go and review. I'm sorry, but I will circle back via email and CC um, Dr. Andrew Johnis. And what am I allowed to do? Can I CC the policy committee members if I find this information and, and say, Absolutely. Oh yeah, here it is right here. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, more than three board members on it. Yeah. Um, so then I I can email Denitris, Dr. Andrew John, as you, Trustee Croninger, and Student Trustee Kofa, and Stoddard? And, and, and Stoddard, because right. Sophie doesn't count in uh, quorum or violate the Brown Act. Okay, I will I will look in my binder when I get back home on March mm -hmm. 2nd, and then send an email. Okay. And I would just add that there was... Um, even older draft policies proposed relative to um, a couple of topics. We had an ad hoc committee mm -hmm. um, of the board that was talking about respectful discourse, respectful conversations on mm -hmm. difficult subjects. And we also had a um, some recommendations regarding um, equal opportunity employment and how we were doing um, our hiring for adjuncts. Mm -hmm. for student employees and we never That's good. went through that um that process because uh, it just got well, lost in the process one of the things we're working on with ap 7120 which is our recruitment and hiring is um adding a new section for part-time faculty hiring so hopefully that will cover some of the things that you it all could. were into this would be the corresponding board policy, board policy. okay mm -hmm. um and then for we haven't added students in there just because that one's you know a little bit different, very unique. Um and we've yeah, so I'll just stop there. Yeah. So I can dig those up. And I was about to say, can yeah. you can you share that with us? Yeah. Are those okay. current policies or like in the world? No, they were, they were in the work. changes oh. to existing policies, or one of them may have been a new policy. Okay. Um mm -hmm. but um Yeah. This is good. Okay. All right. So the next uh, thing is how often do you all want to meet? Do you want to meet monthly? Do you want to meet every month, every other month? Um, are we allowed to work on like draft? Because it sounds like if we're going to meet, we identify a policy, there's going to be some policy revisions. Depending on who wheelhouse it is, it's going to take extra time outside of the actual meeting to put that language in the policy. So would it be better if we do every other month to allow the whoever on the policy committee can work on the language? Okay. Yeah, that that would definitely work um, with uh, BPAP. So that would make the next meeting of this group April. Okay, so every yeah. other month okay. that sounds good. Unless we need one, unless something comes yeah, about. I was just going to say, it. unless BPAP says we really need to catch up here because there's a certain mm -hmm. element right. of that. 
BPAP meets every other Friday. So we meet twice a month. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I know. And we still try to move fast, but it's hard, right, Liz? But keep in <laughs> mind that you're looking at board policies, but BPAP is looking at both board policies and the administrative procedures. And the administrative okay. procedures do not come to the board. So they're actually doing a whole a whole set of work that doesn't come to you. Okay. And we okay. have to allow time for our members to take it out back to their groups for any type of feedback or review. Yeah. Um, so that has to happen too. So there's- Yeah, there's a couple of APs or maybe one that is supposed to come back to the board mm -hmm. um, if it's changed. And- um, Do you know which one off the top of your head? Is it by it's, chance to... It's priority registration. Oh, okay. Oh, because it's in statute. Yeah. Okay. AP. That's AP uh, fifty fifty five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, there's also an AP that the last time I looked, and this was the under our APs, which are lengthy on um, discrimination and harassment and so forth. Mm -hmm that still conflicts with the board policy that we did um, on um, employee-student relationships. And that mm -hmm. should be changed because your AP shouldn't conflict with your board policy. Okay. And I can try to find that again. Yeah, let me know which one because I know yeah. that AP is fairly new for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I don't, off the top of my head, know what the conflict is. I wasn't yeah. aware. But let me know. Yeah, I can, okay. I can put that on a list can, and wrap yeah. it up to the okay. so we can get it there. Yeah, yeah, that would be helpful because yeah. definitely we don't want it to be in conflict with yeah. a board policy. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes those are the kind of cleanup things that come in out of cycle. Yeah. 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 Marsha, just to clarify, there has been some discussion in BPAP that APs should come to the board just so they know they're there. But that's been a discussion and we haven't resolved how that's supposed to work. Sounds like there's some that have to come. Yeah, there's some that have to come, but you have a superintendent president that likes to keep a very clear separation of, of what folks do and let's keep the board in their role and the college in their role. <laughs> so. Yeah, we do. We do acknowledge that the superintendent president is the one that APs go to. Mm -hmm. We just didn't know if sometimes they go to the board. So it could be good, uh, Erica, to clarify that for us. Yeah, we can clarify that because I think like you're pointing out, there are a couple of things where they have to go. Um, but I really, I have seen in other districts where bringing things to the board that's not really their purview causes role confusion. And I want to avoid that. No, I would agree with that. I think that this was just one area of sensitive policy where Absolutely. we put it in the policy mm -hmm. to, to bring it back. But, yeah. and it is true that I think board members don't spend a lot of time reading the APs. Right, they don't. So, yeah. you know, if we thought there was something in there, we may not notice. Right, right. I so completely it's agree. value to having somebody come to us and say, hey, we've done this mm -hmm. with the APs, maybe a really big picture thing mm -hmm. that says, um, you know, here's some new things that are happening with the APs. Yeah, we but, could do that. We could absolutely do more of a, a uh, high level overview so that we could say here in, in case you're wondering, you know, you may have heard that things have changed in the state. Yeah. Here's how our APs have reflected your board policies right. to to do that. Right. That that would be good. Right. Yeah. No, I don't recommend getting the board into the language of these APs. It's and just with new with new presidents we need that clarification. Yeah. yeah. Well, it cha it, it cha it's changed in the past, depending on... Well, let's hope that, that, that that's not really an issue right now. I, I very much <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Trustee Gallup-Moore, your hands up. Yes, yeah, so um, just for um, making sure, um, point of clarification on the agenda. So item 3.3, .3, policy subcommittee meeting schedule, I suggested every other month. It sounds like that's a great idea. My next suggestion is um, only, I know we're all busy people. Um, I just need a little bit more consistency. Can the meeting just be how it is now, which is the first, the last Monday of the month? Can we do that every other month and it'd be the last Monday of the month? Or do we need to do a doodle poll? 
Well, let's let's take a look at the let's not right now, but let's take a look at the calendar and try to see if that can work. Yeah. Okay. Come back to the next meeting with some proposed with dates. some proposed dates. So yes, okay. we'll take a look at that and come back to you. So then the next meeting won't be until April. Do we make the recommendation on what day that should be? Well, I think, um, so one of the reasons I don't think it's a good idea to have the last week in April is that the last week in April for this college is spring break. So, oh, I'm, okay. yeah. Um, there's a break for us? Well, there's a break for a student and there, yes. sometimes people yes. take breaks. I uh, I actually have a conference to go but, to. But isn't that the um, last week of March this time? Yeah, that's the last week Not of March. Not April, yeah. Yeah. So again, let us take a look at the calendar because I want to make sure that we're not crossing over to something else and okay. get back to you. Okay. Sounds okay. like a plan. Yeah. I'd like to look at the calendar. Yeah. So okay. the last policy meeting was July 21st, I believe. And 31st. 31st. Anyways, there are several policies that were reviewed and I have a list of them. So, oh. and there were some for future discussion on that. July, wait, 31st, 2023? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. The EEO policy 3420. Yeah, that's, probably yeah, that's what I was looking at. Okay. okay. Is that the BPAP meeting had a oh, list or, or this committee? I remember. Something. No, she was looking at uh, the last time the policy committee met was in July, last July. Are we going to discuss those now or? No, they have to be agendized. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have to have them on the agenda. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, but we want to. Meeting dates is yeah, going, it's fine because that's, that's on the agenda. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to be very careful. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we exhausted the. I think we have exhausted our topics for today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're on now, we're on item number 4.1 future um, policy yeah. committee considerations. Right. We can suggest topics under 4.1, 4. is it? Yeah. Yes. So I like when you brought up um, Trustee Croninger about the student employee relationship and, and the, uh, and Denitra's, when you reminded me about the anti-discrimination, maybe do you want to put those for possible? We can, we should have a running list. Yeah. Probably just like. Yes, we, we should have a running list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on that running list from the last time around for the what was on future items was BP 3450, the drug free environment, drug prevention, mm -hmm. and 7340 leaves. Okay. Yeah, and you know what? We should circle back with um with Paloma to double check if there were any policies that came up during the financial aid audit that we don't have in place. Um, the drug the drug one was coming to mind in terms of making sure that we're um, educating students okay. on that. And I don't know that that was a problem, but there something did. That's good. The issue was that we did have to make sure we had a policy and a procedure to do something. So let's make sure we're, we've covered that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Whatever the audit what was that? wanted. Yeah. The the uh, financial, financial aid audit. Yeah, yeah. They said clean it up by June, by June thirtieth. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw that in your email. There were some things mm -hmm. that we needed to clean up. So that was related yeah. to certain policies. The question was whether or not we had the right policies in place to meet those. And I think, I think we do have them. What I don't know is that have they been updated, and is the AP updated so that we're informing people the way we're supposed to inform them. So that's, I just have that in the back of my mind. So we want to double check with, with um, Paloma about that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, Good thank meeting. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. How do we get to the meeting schedule agenda for subcommittee? Um, Okay, are we adjourn are we adjourning? Oh yes, I was I think, I think we, Okay. I, I think we've adjourned. Thank you. No, look for that. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.